All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Mind, Body, Spirit Virtual Summit 2018. Today, I'm very excited to have our guest, Summer Sanders. And um, I actually, I don't even know if we talked about this, but I found you through local juicery when I went there like years ago on a girlfriend trip to Sedona and have since been back like several times since. And it's like my favorite place to go there. And I love Sedona so much. Yeah. Cool. I didn't know that. And yeah. that's awesome. So that's that, the connection. And I was like, I have to talk to her for this interview um, because you do so many things. And that's what one of the reasons I really wanted to have you on here is to talk about like, yeah, there's local juicery, like a brick and mortar business, but then there's your whole like coaching thing and you're a mom and like how you balance it all. It's just awesome. <laughs> we'll see. Balance <laughs> yeah. is, a, is a good, yeah. good topic. I think. Totally, totally. Um, so I'm going to read you guys, just introduce you to Summer a little bit, and then we'll get to questions. So Summer Sanders is an author, blogger, certified raw food chef, and founder of Local Juicery, an all-organic cold-pressed juice and cafe concept with locations in Arizona. She is passionate about helping people bring more vibrant plant-based foods into their diets in a delicious and fun way. Summer is known for her innovative recipes and simple laid-back cooking style. Summer lives in Sedona, Arizona with her husband, Mike, and her son, Henry. So Welcome. Thank you. I'm you're so welcome. glad you're here. Totally. Very cool what you're doing. Yeah, thanks. So I'd love for our listeners to hear about your story and how you landed into this like raw food health coach world. Mm. Okay, I'll try not to monopolize all the time with it because right. it is a long story and there's a lot of parts to it. Uh-huh. So I'll do my best to kind of summarize, um, right. summarize it. Right. Um, and I think in different blog posts and um, interviews and stuff, I've gone a little deeper, if anyone cares to dig deeper. Um, but I was born in Missouri in a very rural area on a 10-acre farm that was 100% off the grid. So no electricity. Wow. They built the house with hammers and nails. Like That's my mom and my godfather, best friends, um, and my dad was out of the picture. So I was born there, um, born at home in uh-huh. the mid eighties and spent the first three years of my life on an organic self-sustainable farm. My mom, I, I always attribute a lot of, you know, what I'm doing now to my mom and kind of how she, she raised me. Um, so I was, um, you know, she was vegan and vegetarian from, the time she was 23, and so I grew up that way. Mm-hmm. And, um, definitely lived more an alternative lifestyle. Right. Uh, we moved to Sedona, Arizona, when I was about three years old. My mom was searching for more more community because she was mm-hmm. pretty um, isolated there, and she was training to be a Waldorf educator. Um, so she wanted to find a place to really let that thrive and create her own business. Um, so we moved to Sedona, which was very forward thinking, um, spiritual and intense place. Mm-hmm. And I love it. I'm grateful to have grown up here where I'm at now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I like to say, you know, my mom was awesome. She, all the herbs, all the green juice, she was doing like, um, coffee enemas way before it was trendy and, right. you know, Birkin stocks with socks. Like I'm pretty sure right. she's <laughs> that was her and I grew up around it but I also you know I was homeschooled until I was um in fourth grade and when I went to school um it was although it was an alternative school it was still a public school and um a lot of things get introduced through the school system a lot of insecurities I think um there's a lot of um so basically, I, around the age of 12, 13, 14, was very um, sensitive, very self-conscious going into the school system where now it's like everything I do is on, you know, under a microscope because children are just like that. Mm-hmm. And now it just happens. It's no one's fault. Um, but I started to get early signs of like body dysmorphic mm-hmm. disorder and By the time I was 15, I think it was probably around 15, I had a full-on eating disorder, but didn't even know what it was called. Didn't know what it was. Girls at school were doing it, you know, and 
was this, um, you know, I, I wanted to be a singer. I was obsessed with magazines, you know, I had this image of what this perfect woman was supposed to be. And I think a lot of my s- symptoms, my mom just didn't even notice because she was a single mom trying to make ends meet, raise me um, the best she could. And, you know, she was taking care of her grandchildren too in our home and starting her own business. Yes. So it was a lot. And right. I think as a woman and a young woman coming into the world, you are exposed to a lot and a lot's put on you quickly Mm -hmm. and expectations. And so I definitely struggled with that. And so that moving, like we're going to just fast track to like age 23, I was living in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Um, I had gone to school for music business in um, LA and, but didn't love it. Like the the passion of music got taken out of me there, right? And so I had kind of a life crisis because from a small age, it's all I wanted to do was right. music. And then it was like, oh, this isn't going to happen. Yeah. And so I was living in San Francisco. I was doing makeup as a makeup artist and doing hair, and um, it was kind of a not so healthy, you know, industry at that sure. time, like early two thousand eight. Um, roughly. And, um, I was overweight. I was probably 25 pounds overweight and depressed and unhealthy. And I had bad skin and Mm -hmm. I was getting sick all the time. And I, I think like I was just, I felt like there was just a film over me. I remember like, because I knew better, like I knew how to, take care of myself, but I wasn't. It was like late nights and parties and drinking and overeating and doing all the things that weren't right for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, yeah, it was right around then my mom got me a book called The Presence Process, which I just absolutely love. Um, I still reference it all the time because that paired with another book I read was like what I needed, kind of a catalyst. It was a breathwork, like a um, daily breathwork program. Mm -hmm. Um, self-discovery stuff so at that age I really needed that and that kind of like kicked me in the ass a little bit it was like um okay so knowing all these things now we got to get your body in shape right, right. Or your emotions because they wanted to put me on medication and a lot of things and it just didn't ring right for me mm-hmm. um so I did a two-week juice cleanse it didn't start out as a two-week juice cleanse it was like I woke up one day I was so unhappy and mm-hmm. so obsessed and I was just like you know what mom did this <laughs> so right. Right. this is what I know right so I did, and literally like two weeks later I swear I was a different person a completely different person wow. it was monumental for my life and it's funny that it happens to be juice because at that time the juice bar wasn't even in my mind right um, right but I it um, totally just blew everything up in the best way. And I lost all the weight. I found like extreme motivation and like I quit everything I was doing. I moved down to San Diego and I just started going full force into the food Mm -hmm. and healing and blogging and like writing down all these recipes because people were asking me, what are you doing? Oh my God, what are you doing? People from music school and people from, you know, right. hair and makeup tribe, you know, right, what right, right. That's changed you so much. And it was just the food at for the food and the, the you know, emotional work. Right. And right. So it just like really changed my path. And, um, you know, from there, it just was, I got married to my high school sweetheart. Um, we found our way back to each other. Mm-hmm. And and I went to a school at the time, now it's called Plant Lab, at the time it was called Matthew Kenny Culinary, and I ended up, um, it's a raw, it was raw food school, um, and I ended up working for Matthew, who owned it at the time, it was amazing, and made a lot of amazing friends, and learned a lot about mm-hmm. raw food, and, and marketing that kind of aspect of things, and um and then from there, it was, I want to do a restaurant. I want to do, I, right. loved, I loved what he was doing. I absolutely adored it, the mission behind it and how it was brought into being, too. It was so beautiful. Right. So 
but you know, I didn't have any management or any, you know, kitchen right. experience beyond like making smoothies in a right. little. That's another thing. When I was 17, I worked at a little place in Sedona called Sedona Raw Cafe, yeah, which is a raw food little restaurant here. Yeah. So that's like where I found out about Matthew Kinney and um, David Wolf. Like came right. through. I remember, and he was like with his whole tribe. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right and, and I was just like what are these people doing so that's right. when I kind of learned about raw food yes and I got to do all the desserts and I I fell in love with Matthew's cookbook so that's kind of what took me nice to the school. Right. I found it through that but um yeah and then once my before my son was born he was born in 2013 we were living in Encinitas which is a really cool little beach town mm-hmm. in San Diego and yeah. um um, I just loved it there, but, um, I just knew I wanted to do this like concept of some kind. And then it, I dropped it. Um, my husband was in the military and, you know, he worked really hard to get to where he was mm-hmm. at, in the military and, um, loved it, but I didn't, especially, you know, when we were going to have a kid, I knew it just wasn't the lifestyle for us, right, but, right. but, um, Henry was kind of a surprise baby. <laughs> They're called post deployment babies. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I wasn't very surprised. I think I was communicating with his soul on one level. Right. Um, I was kind of calling him in. But but when he was born, um, after he was born, it was like, I don't know, when you go through birth, I think any mother watching um, probably can relate that it changes you and it gives you a sense of power and um, confidence that maybe right. was not fully integrated beforehand. Right, sure. Once that happened, it was nine months after he was born. The I moved back to Sedona myself. My husband stayed in in San Diego because he was still commit had his time commitment. Right, right. And um, I just started doing pop up shops right. and you know started to just bring it into the world in the, the smallest way that I could. Yeah. And it it built from there. That's and awesome. That's sort of like you know the the small story <laughs> totally I love okay. it yeah well and I know in your history with like working with clients with raw food and all that you've um had the opportunity to work with so you know some celebrities and and stuff like that and I know we've got people listening who are entrepreneurs or want to start a business or grow their own businesses how did you through your work, you gained such a strong, big following for what you do? Hmm. Well, I think, I think just making really good connections, like honest, good connections with mm-hmm. people that are very interesting and very well connected themselves. It's kind of like following the breadcrumbs. Right. Um, you know, and just being a genuinely nice person, <laughs> right. you know, like right. really explaining out to people. And my goal was always to help. And to just share what I was doing, you know, and mm-hmm. um, and to share that was always the why. Like, that was the why for me, as I wanted to help people. And, you know, it can get blurry there, too. I think, especially with social media, mm-hmm. it's really hard. And it's really hard to grow things naturally. So, right. you know, I've been on <laughs> Instagram since 2013. Right, And right. there's people who recently and have way more followers. It's just right. how it goes. And I try not to concern be too concerned on that, right. you know, because I think when you make those genuine connections, yeah, like social media and stuff can get you so far, but it's those real genuine connections with people totally. that take you further. And I, it's never, you know, I've, I've burned bridges, um, in being naive and just starting. And I think that is probably one of the biggest things, the lessons I've learned is like, just be really conscious and aware and mm-hmm. think of things before you do them because sometimes I'm like um (laughs) I'm very like Aryan like uh, I I will just be like okay gonna do this and go right and sometimes think through the the consequences so I think thinking consequences of what you're gonna do how's it gonna affect you know my sphere the sphere around me you know I think Mm -hmm. that's something that's really important totally totally And so at what point did you make the leap from doing your pop-ups with um, local juicery to like having a full-on place? Okay, so i got to go back on the timeline. Henry was nine months when I was doing the pop-ups. He was like literally in a sling while I was juicing awesome. with the 
I think it was probably, let's see, that was February, March, six months after the pop-ups. Um, I opened our our Sedona location. Uh-huh. And my husband was still in the military yep. and came out for a week on the opening end and a week on after we opened and helped me. And was like yeah. staying up all night squeezing lemons and limes and yeah. stuff and, <laughs> and affecting the place. And um, yeah, that was crazy. So it was six months after nice. the pop ups. Yeah. And then I know you fairly recently opened your second one, right? When did you decide to do that? Well, when we opened the first one, it was always a plan to open more. Uh-huh. Um, you know, it takes a while to really get the system. We didn't know what we were doing. Right. Like we, right. I was like by myself. I'd never led a team before. Right. You know, trying to make this happen, and um, so it took about it took about two and a half years to get it right. to where it was running efficiently enough um, that we could open the second one. Right. You know. We never wanted to just be one little spot. We feel like we both have enough energy. My husband now does work with local juicery, right? A hundred percent. So um, we both have a lot of energy and right. want to spread the good word. <laughs> totally, I love it. So one thing I loved that you spoke to on your website is you said health is more than just about what you eat. It's also how you think and feel. And I'd love for you to expand on that a little bit. Yeah, so that's actually something I'm going through right now. So it's really great because mm-hmm. I think, first of all, you never get it perfect. Like, I've been in this for so long now, um, and I'm always evolving, and things are always changing, and you mm-hmm. fall down, and then you get back up, and then you fall down, and you get back up. But um, what that means to me and what how it's been manifesting in my life is trying to find some form of balance and feeding, you know, our slogan at Local Juicery is uh, love your body, feed your soul, drink your juice. Mm-hmm. And um, that really is what it is. It's you You have to take time to nourish uh, the inner mm-hmm. part of you. Um, and really, whatever that is for you, you know, some people love meditation. Some people, it's hiking. For me, it's a combination of both and just having time to make almond milk in my house. Right. Like one of my favorite things to do. Is right. <laughs> my kitchen to make almond milk, yeah. and that makes me really happy. So you know, you're like a raw food nerd when yes. that's like your favorite thing to do. <laughs> I know. I know. That makes me so fun. Yeah. But I, I was, you know, recently we're like in busy season, and I just was burnt out. I'm just working nonstop, and there's no loving my body, and there's no feeding my soul, and so right. I'm not living what I'm doing, and I start to burn out. And I'm living on, you know, cacao tonics. And right. like, even though it's healthy, it's still caffeine. And I'm right. burning my adrenals out. Right. So I, it's like the third time I've had adrenal fatigue right. since I've been local juicing. Right. So, like, you know, it's, um, I've had to, like, call in the troops and um, start feeding my myself healthy and eating foods that I know to eat and mm-hmm. taking care of myself in that way and meditating and reading the books that feed me and reading, doing the things that I know make me a whole person mm-hmm. instead of just a fragmented little piece. Yes. And that's what it means to me is um, we're not just this fragment. We're not just this body, you know, how we look. We're so much more. And when you're considering yourself, you have to think, you know, maybe it is like that glass of wine at night makes you really happy. Maybe it's not the best thing for you to take on one level, but if it on the whole, on the broad spectrum, just makes right. you feel relaxed and really happy, then drop the guilt on it and have a glass of wine one right. once a week or something, you know? Right, like that sure. for me is stopping this this whole like I have to eat this way all the time and da 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 because that gets too right. rigid on another level. So it's right. just considering yourself as this whole being with many different needs and trying to take care of yourself the best you can on all those different in all those different areas. Totally. And I see that all the time in like the health and wellness space is people tend to live in extremes a lot. So 
there. <laughs> yeah, totally. Me too. Like we all find each other. But you know, you can be extreme on one way, you know, a lot of people end up in my office, like they don't even know where to start to eat healthy, for example. So they're like extremely kind of on the unhealthy spectrum. But then there's the other camp that is so rigid in what they need to do and like, don't even trust that their bodies can be healthy. You know, if they enjoy some like amazing dark chocolate every once in a while there's all this judgment on it you know like now I'm gonna gain 10 pounds and get in this snowball of crazy and like that's not balanced either you know we need to kind of be in the middle so I love that that's such a good point yeah um another thing I loved from your website is you talked about the four pillars of wellness Mm -hmm. so I'd love for you to introduce that concept to the listeners um, okay, so let me make sure I have these memorized, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, number one is um, that your body is a temple. Uh-huh. So treating your body, and they're a little longer, the sentences on the website, but your body is a temple. So treat it as it is. It's this beautiful thing that is here to house your soul, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. When we get so um, stuck on that, we're just this body who needs to accumulate these nice things and wear these right clothes and you know that Mm -hmm. gets really it separates us from what really matters so Mm -hmm. treat your body as a temple so give it you know do your nice skin brushing and you know taking care of it putting your oils on and just feed it feeding it with love and you know treating it I always say to people you know you take your car in to get a tune-up like you take you take it to get washed every week or whatever and it's just like treating your body like this beautiful vehicle that it is to Mm -hmm. that's going to take you through this life um the next one is eating plant-based and organic you like eating as close to the earth as possible Mm -hmm. Um, and that one is just to me it's it's really important because i'm like always super super interested and kind of obsessed with hormones and how they work and and um just been researching a lot lately on like all the pesticides and the chemicals and how they disrupt our hormones and 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 our endocrine system Mm -hmm. and it's really um to me it's just like wow just by eating you know maybe berries every day that are unorganic you could totally wreck your body so i know sometimes it's hard to you know board or you know it, it's very expensive to buy organic all the time it can be but I think going to farmers markets and there's like a lot of health food stores will do bulk discounts if you're buying in bulk they'll give you like a 10% off which is really cool and just finding ways to eat as close to the earth as possible whether that's having your own little herb garden or shopping at the farmers markets your local farmers markets that is so major you know, it's the community, it brings the, the money back into your town, into the state, um, yeah. versus going to, you know, Whole Foods or corporate. Um, so that one, I think, is super big. Um, and I think the next one is health is more than what you eat, which we kind of just covered. Mm-hmm. Like, it's all encompassing. It's your yeah. whole. So, um, and I think the last one is probably the most important, which is accepting yourself where you're at. Um, and not getting in that crazy judgmental place because when you can take those three deep breaths and just say, right now I'm 10 pounds heavier than I want to be. Right. Mm. Yeah, there it is. That's what it is. That's the truth right now. I'm not stuck here forever, Right. but this is what's right now. Or, you know, oh, I just ate that chocolate cake and, mm, yeah, I ate that chocolate cake. Mm-hmm. I was going to die today, you know? Right. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Right. And I learned a lesson again. Right. There's a lesson. So it's just kind of how, you know, we need to validate ourselves sometimes. I think, you know, there's a lot on like validating your children or validating your partner or giving people the validation they need. But it's also just stopping to take a breath and say, yeah, that was hard. We went through that and we're going to pick ourselves up again tomorrow. Right. Or in 10 minutes, you know? Right. right. Totally. I love yeah. that. Nice. Um, What are one or two examples or ways people can start to incorporate more like of a plant strong diet into their life? So um, this is a question I get asked a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think like number one, first of all, 
by adding one plant-based meal into your diet, no matter what kind of diet you have, if you add one organic plant-based meal into your life daily, you're going to see a change, even with just that one. I've mm -hmm. seen people totally, my brother, for instance, he's just um, come to Sedona to visit for a little bit from Missouri, and he was having some, some health problems, and he and his wife both added one plant-based meal, dinner, to their life and still doing like hash browns and their gluten toast and everything in the morning and um, they have lost a lot of weight mm -hmm. just with that one meal. Their skin is clearing up. They got enough confidence to quit smoking. So mm -hmm. it's it, it snowballs in a good way. Totally. So start your taste buds start to change and you start to crave different things and you start to feel better. Mm -hmm. um, so I always recommend people don't go cold turkey. <laughs> Right. I've done that. Right. And it's really hard. And right. a lot of things come up when you change your diet, emotional detox and whatnot. And that part's important, but you got to be ready to hold it. Sure. So I think adding like an amazing smoothie in the morning or adding some, you know, if you're doing like a salad, adding some more superfoods into that for your lunch, maybe you're still doing like, you know, turkey salad or something. Right. I don't know. But adding more of those superfoods in and adding some kale and some more deep leafy greens and maybe starting each morning with a little lemon wa warm lemon water to help your liver and alkalize your body a little bit. There's just little small things you can start to interject into your current lifestyle. And eventually the, the other things are going to kind of fall away if you're really committed to it because you, you won't want them anymore. And totally. that's what I over and over again with my clients and with a lot of my friends and family. Yeah. And my totally. husband's a great example of that too. He's, he's got quite a story. He's right. vegan now and he was, um, you know, he's like, a, he's a Navy SEAL and he was right. like, it was super, you know, hardcore meat, hardcore right, right. CrossFit and like, and I never pushed it on him, but right. I did right. cook, I cook and prepare foods I prepare foods and he was living with me it's been seven years now and um and now he's vegan I think in December he went totally vegan and mm -hmm. it's amazing to see his changes we're not super strict either like we're not hardcore vegans or anything we're not right. gonna yell right. at you if you eat honey or anything like that <laughs> <laughs> well I well, love I that your approach that is very you know, take baby steps. Because again, with the extreme things, I think a lot of people they go from eating maybe the standard American diet to like yourself, I'm going to do a two weeks ju juice cleanse, you know, yeah. and for you, it was like an amazing catalytic experience. But for a lot of people, then they like end up feeling worse. And are like, I can't do this. And they go back or they don't have enough tools and strategies to like, know where to go after that. Yeah. Um, so I love that approach. It's important. Yeah, it's worse before it gets better. And yeah. that's really important for people to know, I think, right. because uh, symptoms will start coming up. And my brother's going through that right now. It's just like having a lot of symptoms that are coming up, but it's just stuff working its way through. Totally. I totally went through it. Yeah. Multiple times. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, okay. So I want to talk about your book. So tell me about Ron Radiant. What inspired you to write it? What can people expect to find in the book itself? Cool. Yeah, Ron Radiant. So it kind of, honestly, it started when I had that shift. So I went down to San Diego and I had, I, I just, I wasn't, I didn't have a job at the time. I didn't have a regular job. Mm -hmm. I was writing for some online sites and stuff, but I had a lot of time to like play with recipes and work on my blog. So I just started doing that. And that's kind of where it got born was everyone asking me for these things, my friends. And I was like, I'm going to just put together a little guide right. for like ladies who are busy and want to change their diet. And so I called it the Busy Girl's Guide to Raw Food. Right. And I remember printing it at Staples or Kinko's or something. And it was like 50 pages of recipes, right. pictures that I took on my iPhone. Right. Uh, and I still have it, and it's really fun to look at the different stages. Yeah. And so that was, like, number one. And I was like, cool, this is awesome. I can offer this to my clients. I think I had one client at that time. And um, so then from there, I got super into my online coaching, and I had a site that was pretty active and a blog that was pretty active. So I, I revamped it and, like, started to sell it online as a PDF. 
as mm-hmm. a down and made it really beautiful. I got a, cam- a Canon camera and I was like, I'm going to teach myself how to take pictures. Right, so, right. so I started doing that and filled it with all my own pictures and that was really fun. And then um, it was just like, you know what? I really want to make this accessible. I, I love this. And I, I feel like in the book, it kind of outlines everything you need to create a healthy life. Um, and I go over the mind, the body, and the spirit. It's mm-hmm. not just about the food. Um, there's a five day cleanse in there. There's like a guide on taking enemas. There's a whole thing on enzymes and, Mm -hmm. you know, little things that have helped me along my way. Um, these supplements that I think that have been most beneficial for me, um, how to stock a raw food kitchen, your shopping Mm -hmm. lists, those kind of things as long as well as like a hundred and I think it's like 135 recipes. Wow. Uh, And, um, yeah, I just was like, I really want to get this out there. I really want to get this out there. Um, so I had a contract in 2013 with a, um, book publishing company that I will not name. Um, but once I, I, my old Instagram handle was, um, raw food love. Cause I was super into the raw food. I was like pretty hundred percent raw. And then after I had Henry things shifted, I just didn't feel good being hundred percent raw anymore. Right. Right. It, was, it wasn't right for me. Right. And so I started adding like grains and um, I did bone broth there for a little bit. Um, sure. Just trying it out. And um, my my publishing company dropped me because I wasn't 100% raw anymore. And they thought it would affect wow. me. Wow. So that was like uh, totally crushed. Like totally yeah. crushed. Yeah. So yeah. sad. Like was so excited and like worked really hard right many nights while I was pregnant I would wake up at like three in the morning and do the edits and stuff and so I just kind of dropped it for a while and then um more recently I picked it back up again I was like this needs to go out there I need to do this I need to just make it happen so I just started pick myself back up and then got on my publisher which is Skyhorse Publishing and um my editor Loved it and gave me a lot of freedom with it. And it came out on my birthday, which was January 16th. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it was like an awesome birthday present. Yeah. And it just filled one of my best friends to the photography. We styled it at my house and spent five days just like getting geeking out on it. Right. And my husband was eating all the food. And she was eating all the food, too. And her name's Alexa. Alexa Gray. She's amazing. She's um. But she was like, this is the best my digestive system has ever been. Like, she <laughs> right. was those five days of shooting this food because it's just so cleansing. Right, right. But but the thing is with the food, I, I consider it like a – Raw and Radiant is, is the name of the book. And it's kind of like what I was saying. You can just add these meals, these smoothies or these nut milks or these right. products to your diet, of whatever kind of diet you're eating. And it can totally um, give you – a boost and um, kind of give you the confidence to play with different ingredients. Have a lot of a guide on superfoods in there and different things. Um, it's really fun. It's really pretty. Yes. I'm so proud of it. Totally. Well, and I love that too because I think a lot of people hear the words raw diet and they freak out. Oh yeah. Like they envision like great. I'm eating celery and carrot sticks for the rest of my life. Like it's hard to conceptualize that without a framework of like a guide. So I think that's so great that you've created that for people. So what advice would you give to other people interested in authoring a book? Oh, you have to be really passionate about it because it's, um, I think number one passion, number two structure like structuring yourself, which is something I'm really trying to bring into my life right now, is, um, you know, getting really like calendar, even if you don't feel like writing, write anyways, you know, do it anyways, maybe you get one sentence that you like, maybe you get none, but it's just that habit, Mm -hmm. Uh, and, you know, I think partnering with the right people is really important. So finding a, you know, a publisher that's really going to support what you're doing and, you know, making sure you have an outlet to um, promote it mm-hmm. um, and kind of doing that research beforehand. Like, right. where am I going to sell it? Where am I going to? And then, you know, before I pitched the book, I had like 
where all these places I was going to sell it, all these places I was, you know, these people I was going to share it with to promote it and sure. give them all the reasons why I was just going to be super easy for them to sign on and I would take care of it all. Right. You know, which I did, you know, and, and they've been helpful too. But um, I think when you're a new author, you really have to just be ready to do a lot of the work yourself. Unless totally. you're like, I don't know, Oprah or something. Right. <laughs> 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 right, right. It'll sell out before it's yeah. even a thing. Yeah, exactly. totally. So we're going to segue into kind of some fun, a little bit more personal questions. So I want to know who inspires you? You know, this has been something I've been considering a lot lately. <laughs> um, I try, I've been trying actually not to look at other people's work too much or read other people's stuff too much right now because um, it can seep over into your own stuff a little bit to where you start to emulate them a little bit too much and you're like wait a second is that me or is that that person because there's a ton of people that inspire me I mean I I, there's so many amazing female business owners right now Mm -hmm. and women doing amazing things out there Um, but I, I have found that I have to like separate just a little bit um there's a lot of cookbook people and like I love Matthew Kinney was amazing he inspired me Meredith Baird um she worked with me at Matthew she's an author too she wrote uh-huh. Coconut Kitchen and she has this brand new Sephora um she's a friend and amazing and I was recently on a podcast with um Ashley Wood she has this podcast Manifest This uh-huh. she's super cool I love these women that are just doing they're calling and they're sharing authentically, you know, mm-hmm. like I love Ashley Wood because she's just like, so doesn't play the, the Instagram game, like the right. everything's perfect kind of game. And that's something, you know, I think that is refreshing. Totally. And, um, I love the Sakara life girls. Um, I grew up with them here in Sedona and I think what they're doing is really beautiful. they have a plant based meal delivery, um, nationwide, which wow. is awesome. And, um, yeah, so there's these just super amazing women and my son, Henry, I've got to say he inspires me <laughs> more than anyone <laughs> because he just so knows what he wants. Yeah. He's very clear in who he is. Right. He goes naked everywhere right. and all he wants to eat is watermelon. And there's nothing more inspiring to me than that. <laughs> like, right. So himself. And I right. feel like, we're all trying to like get back to that and totally. so that children are really beautiful in that way totally and so I'd love to we kind of touched on this a tiny bit in the beginning but I'd love to talk about how you spoke to like working on balance mm-hmm. so what are some of your like daily weekly what do you do to check in and see where you are between business being a mom all your other stuff Um, well, okay. So I think daily, I try to wake up at five to five 30 every day because Henry wakes up between six 45 and seven. So I need to have that time in the morning for myself, whether that's making his lunch and pre making breakfast so that I can actually connect with him when he wakes up being this busy frazzled person, um, or meditation, which I, I love to just take time to have my inner space um, or reading something that's inspiring to me. Um, I always have warm lemon water in the morning. I've been doing that for like ever. And that's something I love. Um, I usually have some kind of like tonic. Sometimes lately I've been kind of shifting into smoothies because it's been warm out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I always try to eat breakfast with Henry. So there's a lot of my routine is kind of based around Henry. So, mm-hmm. you know, taking him to school and making sure I kiss him and all those little things that you do. Um, let's see, what else do I do? I try to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner because, as I said, I'm kind of obsessed with the hormone thing right now and right. see my blood sugar, you know, steady. And um, so that's something I've really try- been trying to find time to eat meals and eat them slowly without the phone, without anything going on, just me and my food. Right. <laughs> it's time. Right. Um, um, I make dinner every single night for my family. Um, and that includes my mom who lives here in Sedona and stays with us most of the time. And my husband and Henry and uh-huh. often my father. Um, so, and Henry loves to cook with me. 
So that's mm-hmm. something that just makes me feel really balanced, knowing that I'm feeding my family, um, putting Henry to bed and having some tea, hanging with my husband. Right. Um, weekly, I try, I actually, every week I go to um, my good friend, Alice Dell. She does Alpha Biotics here in Sedona, which is absolutely amazing. And if you haven't heard of Alpha Biotics, it's um, uh, brain balancing. You're kind of laying on this table, kind of chiropractic-like, um, but it's so gentle. And what it does is balance your right and left brain and bring you back to your human brain versus your f- fight or flight brain, which most of us are operating out of often. Right. And for me, it's like the most gentle, um, gentle and relaxing thing that I can do for myself. So I do it weekly. And um I do like a massage once a month if I can manage. Sometimes I can't. But my body, since I'm standing so much, um, my body, I have old sports injuries in my knees, and I have to do like some kind of body work. care. That. Yeah, otherwise things start to fall apart. Try to go on a week, a uh, weekly hike because we live in Sedona, and I would just be right. insane not to. Right. Uh, but my routines have really slimmed it down. Um, oh, I do do a baking soda bath. Um, where I put like two containers of baking soda into my bathtub. Uh-huh. I do that like at least once a week. Yeah. And so that, that I just love. Um, yeah. Nice. So, yeah, it's simple. Kind of real family, a lot of business in between all that. Right. Totally. Totally. So I want to know what advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, God. So much. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, probably to relax a little bit and just Mm -hmm. recognize that um, you're going to, you're going to wish that you took this moment seriously. I think I was always kind of rushing to get to the next age or the Mm -hmm. next piece of my life. Uh, It'll be better when, or when I'm told I'll get this. And I think I never really, um, could fully enjoy where I was. And I think that would be the advice that I'd like to relay to her. <laughs> just totally. Relax and enjoy yourself because life is short and fleeting. <laughs> yeah, totally. And it's so funny because I would say a very large percentage of I've asked everyone that question and most people have said some form of that. Yeah. Like, just chill out, you know, <laughs> it'll all be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> totally. Don't judge yourself so harshly. You right. Know? Right. Totally. Yeah. Um, if you could have dinner with one person, dead or alive, who would it be? I've I've been asked this question before and I I really like I've thought about this in depth and I truly it's gonna be really corny. You guys can laugh at me, but I would want to go back and sit with myself at like 14, 15 right. and just connect with myself at that age because I feel like she really needed someone to listen to her right, and, totally. um, and no one did. And I feel like that would be monumental right. and so interesting to me. Sure. To like see your perspective then. Uh, yeah. So totally. <laughs> I like that answer. That's very unique and good. Um, okay, so what's next for you and local juicery? Well, we're some of it I can't really talk about um specifics, but we are looking to open a third location. Um hopefully by 2019 we'll have that fully nice fully functioning. Um and we're also kind of trailing behind a lot of other people, but we're trying to get our, our product line launched. We have like several, several different tonics and, um, some like an awesome matcha tonic and Mm -hmm. um, some other cool things that I can't talk about fully, but, um, they'll be popping up on our Instagram in the next couple months. Nice. Things with people that we're really excited about. Awesome. Third location. Totally. In Arizona or elsewhere? Yes, Arizona for now. Nice, nice. I'm just saying, eventually you should come to Chicago because we need, <laughs> you know, in the Midwest, like we need yeah. that stuff so bad. 
Um, okay, so yeah, totally. So how can our listeners find and keep in touch with you? What's your website, your social, all that? So my website is strongandradiant.com. And that's where you'll find like a ton of my recipes, links to my book and um, a lot of different things there. Um, And then my social is summer.sanders on Instagram, which Mm -hmm. is primarily where I'm at. You can find me on Facebook too, but it's really just my Instagram feed and do it. So, and then local juicery is just localjuicery.com. And then um, our handle is at, Instagram again is local juicery. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm always sharing recipes and fun things. Sedona picks. (laughs) Totally. I love it. So, um, so you guys know, we'll leave all these details below the interview too, with like click through links. So you can snag her book, Ron Radiant. You can visit, um, her website, follow her on Instagram, um, both summer and local juicery. You guys put out great stuff all the time. So, all right, Summer, thank you so much for your time. I so appreciate it. And guys, again, check out all the info to follow Summer and every exciting thing she's doing. And I hope you all enjoyed the interview. Thanks, Abby. You're welcome. <laughs>